An aspect of the A-level course is how we use maths to model real life scenarios. Exam questions that test you on this ability come in lots of different chapters. Quadratics, trigonometry, exponentials, logarithms, sequences and series, etc. But there are some general tips that will help you to pick apart these wordy questions and gain lots of marks. I've written five questions there that you should ask yourself when doing these questions. They're best explained when actually doing a question. So let's do a question here. We have a graph of the trajectory of a rugby ball, its height above the ground, obviously that's the height, plus against the distance away from the where, where the ball was kicked. So the ball was kicked from here and it goes wee and hits the ball, hits the ground down there. Okay, before we go any further, I think I already know what chapter this is. I know that the flight of something under gravity is, uh, the trajectory is a parabola, a quadratic. So I, I think this question's about quadratics here. The ball reaches a maximum height of 12 meters and hits the ground at a point 40 meters. I have in my mind this question, what can I draw? Now I already have a graph drawn here, but what I can do is add to that graph the information as I read it. So the maximum height of 12 meters is there and it hits the ground at a point 40 meters from where it was kicked. So I'm writing those on the graph as soon as I read it. The ball passes over the horizontal bar of a set of rugby posts. The bar is three meters above the ground. Now what can I draw doesn't just need to be a graph. It could be anything that gets it okay in my head. So a set of rugby posts like that, where the horizontal bar, so the bar that goes horizontally there, is a height of three meters above the ground. So how, what is that in the context of this question? If the ball goes over the posts, then that horizontal bar must be underneath the, traje the trajectory. Find the greatest possible horizontal distance of the rugby posts from O. Okay. So these rugby posts that I've drawn don't need to be where ex exactly where I drew them. They could be anywhere here, as long as the ball goes over them. So the greatest distance is what we're looking for. We're looking for where it's there. Now you couldn't click and drag like I just did in an exam, but you can imagine it. And maybe you could draw on different ones. And the greatest possible distance. Okay, what do I need? I need the distance here, up to there. What do I have? I have the Y coordinate, the Y value in that coordinate there, and I need the X. What else do I need? In order to get that, what do I need? I'm gonna need the equation of that graph. What algebra can I write down? Here we get a bit juicy. I know that the equation of a, of a quadratic, there are different forms of it. There's factorized, there's completed the square, or there's completely expanded. Which one's going to be useful here? I think because I have the two roots of it, I already know that that quadratic is gonna look something like that. But I don't know exactly how tall it is, how high it goes. So I've left that space there. So there needs to be a constant out the front. I've written down some algebra now that I can work with. What else do I need? I, that, I need that value of that A. What do I have? 
I have that point that it goes through. I think I'm going to leave the rest to you there to use this point to find that value and use it to find this value here and answer the question. But what help, what's helped there is things that I've drawn on the diagram that's been given and asking myself, what do I need? And using what I have in order to get there. I'll leave the rest to you to do. This question is very similar, so I'm gonna give you fewer tips here. This one is about the profit made when selling a children's toy. And it's given us the equation this time, the profit. We've got a sketch of that graph and it asks us questions about it. I would like you to use these tips to try to answer this full question yourself. Another type of exam question here, those previous two were about quadratics. Just take a look at this one yourself and ask yourself, what chapter is this? So I'm seeing this exponential function here. It's a question about exponentials. Immediately, what can I draw? I could sketch the graph of an exponential. I know what this graph is gonna look like. It's gonna look something like this. And even just drawing that might make it a bit easier to think about in my head. The value of the car was 32,000 pounds on the 1st of January. I think I want to put some labels on my axes here. We have the value upwards and it was first valued in 2001. So 2001 is gonna be where we start. And then we've got values for 2005. So four years later. And 2012, so 11 years later. And we've got some values here to put on. We have that in 2005, it was 32,000. And in 2012, it was 50,000. Okay, already I've put on my diagram everything that's in these first bits here. Well, I could write the equation again. A, B to the T, there we go. I think I want to leave the rest to you there to use those values and answer these first two parts of part A. When you get to part B, there's a word that jumps out to me there this word, interpret. Whenever you see the word interpret in an exam, it means refer to the real life context. So when interpreting the value of the constant A, you're gonna to need to mention something about either value or time or both, maybe how they connect to each other. Similarly for the constant P. I'll leave the rest to you. One last question, again, not many tips for this one, but just to repeat that tip, I'm seeing this here, and I know what that's gonna look like on a graph. If I have an exponential, but up here in the power is a negative, that's exponential decay, and that exponential graph is going to, reflect, going to be reflected and it's going to go downwards like that. And holding that image in your mind of what's happening might help you to make headway with that question. Good luck with all of those.